Cool. Hey makers, welcome to Dev. Welcome to Devon. Hey friends, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devon here, and today it's time for the much-awaited review of the Mint 3D Super 3D Pen. Mint 3D is definitely the most requested brand that I've been getting in the comments and in emails. And that makes sense because there's actually not many other options available. Around this time last year, you could find a couple dozen different 3D pens available on Amazon. But if you go now, the options are very limited. It's not that no one likes 3D pens anymore, but rather 3Doodler, the creators, inventors of the original 3D pen, well, they have a patent for some of the mechanisms inside of the 3D pen, and last holiday season they decided to finally enforce it. So there was this mass extinction of a lot of brands of 3D pen. Mint 3D, however, has survived, and that's because they went the legit route. They actually licensed the patent from 3Doodler, so they're doing it right. If you've seen my reviews for all the different 3Doodler pens, I think I've tried them all, well, I like them. I really like them a lot. They're some of my favorites, some of the best on the market. And my only constant gripe with 3Doodler is that they're using the 2.85 millimeter filament, which isn't as common and accessible as the 1.75 millimeter filament that I use with most of my 3D printers and most of my 3D pens. So I'm really excited about the Mint 3D pen because they're using 3Doodler's awesome technology, but their pen also takes 1.75 millimeter filament. I've also been told that the inside of the Mint 3D pen is very special because from the nozzle all the way back to the gearbox, it's a single piece, which means it's way less likely to clog. And clogging has basically been the cause for a lot of other 3D pens to die on me. So let's open it up. We've got some really cool projects to do today as well. Yep, here's the box. And if I can just get this tape off, we can start the review. Oh, and look at that. We've got a nice little blobosaur on the package, so I guess they weren't too worried about legality there. And we're in. Here we go, we've got ourselves a nice little user manual. Of course, there is a power supply and a USB cable. This thing isn't wireless, so you do need to plug it in. We've got this little screwdriver here, super cute. As with most pens, it comes with a tiny bit of sample filament, ABS in this case, which I hate, so we won't be using that. And here's the pen itself. Wow, so this thing is pretty unassuming. It's super slim. It's definitely got one of the thinner profiles of most of the pens that I've tried out. And as you can see, there is definitely a separation here for the nozzle. So it does look like the nozzles can be replaced. So maybe it's not entirely one piece, but uh, hopefully it is virtually clog proof as I was promised. Here there's a little rubber door that opens up and that gives us access to this little potentiometer, just a little dial that will let us adjust the temperature. Here we've got a little slider, which is what we'll use to adjust the speed of the extrusion. And then on the other side we have the two buttons to feed the filament forward and backwards. This is a five volt pen, so you could plug this into a computer, but we're just gonna be using the wall outlet. On the back here you can see there's two holes, one for the filament and one for the plug, so just make sure you stick it in the right hole. All right, it's plugged in, so now we can press this forward button and you'll see that light starts blinking to let us know that the pen is heating up. And once it is heated up, it'll turn solid. All right, so it looks like you actually have to use the little screwdriver tool and you turn the little screw in here to change the temperature for different filaments. So that might be kind of annoying if you have to switch between a lot of different filaments constantly, but I'm guessing most of us will stick to one filament. In my case, I love PLA, and that's what I'm gonna be using right now. So we will set that for PLA, and I'm gonna be using some of the cheapest stock PLA that came with a cheap Chinese printer. Uh, 3D pens shouldn't be that particular with what filament they take. They're not as precise as a 3D printer, so this stuff should work just fine, and you can get a whole kilogram for 10, 15 bucks. Let's go ahead and plug this in and load in our filament. Let's clip off the end of this filament so it's nice and clean. We'll stick it in the pen, and apparently the pen is set to temperature for ABS by default, so since we are using PLA here, we are gonna wanna open up this little door and adjust the temperature. 
So we'll just use this little screwdriver tool and we'll turn the dial counterclockwise just a tiny bit so that the line is pointing towards that B in the top left corner. According to the manual, that's the position you wanna use for PLA. So there we go. Close up the door and see what happens when we start extruding. So the filament is coming out here, but it's not coming out super smoothly. I think the temperature might be a little bit low. So we actually are gonna open this up again and increase it just a tiny bit. I'll just set this to the vertical position, which is right between the PLA and ABS settings. And yeah, that actually helped a lot. So now we're getting nice, good extrusion. That was medium speed and here's the top speed. So that's looking a lot better. Great, so it's time for today's designs, which I'm super excited for. These might look like some random squiggles, but these are actually deconstructed spherocons. So you might remember my spherocons that I 3D printed in other videos. Well, these are basically unfolded versions of that, which I'm hoping to trace out and then bend back together into a working spherocon. And you can actually already find a lot of different templates kind of like this made for paper folding, but I made these specifically for the 3D pen. So it's got those extra guidelines to help guide the process. And uh, well, I haven't tried these yet, so let's go ahead and see what happens. So I think I'm gonna use my silicone cooking mat, which is pretty nice. It's not that transparent though, maybe just enough that I can see my designs through it. And I also realized that this white filament is gonna be really hard to see on camera. So let's actually swap that out for a black filament. By double clicking the retract button, the filament will just automatically back out. And once that comes all the way out, we can replace it with this black G-Tech filament, which is another cheap PLA. All right, there you go. That's a lot easier to see on screen. Now we can go ahead and start tracing this design. Oh, okay, that didn't quite work. I think my silicone mat is a little bit dusty, so that's keeping it from sticking down as well as it used to. So let's see if we can get away with just tracing directly onto the paper. I'm gonna start with the outline here and just follow it all the way around this shape. And right now I'm not speeding through, I'm going in real time and you can see that the filament is actually extruding at a pretty good speed. And this is actually somewhere around the middle of the speed, so we can definitely go a lot faster and a lot slower. And it's a good sign that the comfortable speed for me is somewhere right in the middle. It means they chose a good range. Anyways, now we can speed through and finish that up. As we all know, the 3D pen does require a bit of patience but that's also why it can be a very nice and meditative activity. With these sphere cons specifically, all we have to do is follow these lines. So yeah, it's actually a relatively low stress design. Maybe we'll trace this center line as well, just to add a bit of extra reinforcement. Well, that actually came off surprisingly nicely. It did take some of the ink from the paper with it, but other than that, it's a really nice piece. Now comes the second part of this construction, which is folding up this model and turning it into a hexaspherecon. And to do that, we're basically gonna wanna take these curved edges and connect them to the adjacent straight edges here. And all those perpendicular struts that we created should help us line things up. I'll start by using the heated pen right on this corner point, which will soften up the PLA just enough that I can start bending it because that point right there is probably the trickiest part. Now I'll go in and work my way along the edge, just adding a little blob of plastic between each strut. And why don't we switch to this cool light blue filament? I think this might be glow in the dark. Let's use that to join the points together just to get a bit more color in here. So I'll purge out the black, and now we can continue along the edge, joining each of these struts. Once again, it's an act of patience, but it really isn't too difficult. 
Or at least it shouldn't be that difficult, but for some reason, I wasn't able to close up my Hexaspherecon, and after reviewing my design, I realized that I actually made a mistake with my template, and the number of sections on the curved parts didn't line up with the sections on the straight parts. So, I went back into Illustrator and redesigned that template. Hopefully this one will work a little bit better. And for this attempt, I'll use this larger one, which is split into two pieces. So we'll print two of these instead. So I switched back to the black filament, and once again, just like the first attempt, I'll trace everything. Although I am gonna go ahead and do this little loop at the corner points, just so that the part doesn't come to a real sharp point, and hopefully that'll make it easier to fold it together at the end. Very nice. It looks pretty good, but what do you know? Once again, I made a mistake with the template. As you can see with this third revision, I was missing a little wedge right there at the end. So luckily that's something that I can just add on to the part here. There we go. Hopefully that's the last mistake I've made on this template. And perfect. Now we just need two of those. This time around for the joints, I think I'll use this nice gold color and I'll follow the same process as before, except this time I'll first join these two parts together, just like so. And now it's just like the last one, except hopefully we have the right amount of segments so that this will all come together. Boop, boop, boop. Down the line I'll go adding one dot after another. And yes, this time around, I was able to join all of those edges all the way around. And here we have a pretty good looking Hexaspherecon. Of course, this is a pretty minimal design. If we wanted to, we can 3D pen all over the surface and make it look super cool. But I kind of like this really lightweight and minimal look. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here for now. How about we try one of these Octospherecons next? The idea here is exactly the same as the last one. I'll do that same little loop at the corners. And once again, we'll make two of these and combine them together and then go around and start joining all the points. Of course, if you wanted to just do a line of 3D pen along the edge, that would work too. But personally, I think it looks really fun to just have those dots wherever the lines intersect. Luckily, I didn't make the same mistakes with this template, and I was able to complete this Octospherecon on my first try. Very cool. And if we want to turn this into an ornament, we can actually just take the 3D pen and extrude straight up. Give that a second or two to cool down, and we've got ourselves a nice 3D printed string. All right, at this point, we've done all but one of my sphere cons here, so we might as well do this last one. This one is the easiest after all. It's just these little four segments, and that makes the entire sphere con. So let's peel this off. Oh yeah, ASMR gold right there. And once again, I'll use that little technique of sticking the nozzle in the corner there just to soften the model enough to do the bend a little more easily and then we'll join all those seams. Awesome, there's our tiniest little sphere con yet. And this one actually rolls quite well. This design is so lightweight that it really just takes the slightest breath to move the thing along. It's kind of like a tumbleweed from the future. <laughs> As for the hexasphere con and the octasphere con, well, those roll along a kind of crazier path, and I think those benefit from having more weight to them. So in this case, they're not the best rollers. They do kind of bounce though, so there's that. On a related note, I also thought it would be kind of cool to print out these deconstructed sphere cons on my 3D printer, and then use the 3D pen to assemble them. 
Although this one was printed out before I realized my mistakes with my template, so I wasn't able to join it together completely, but I figured I'd give you a little sneak peek of some cool things that I'll be trying in the future. Plus, it still makes a pretty interesting looking sculpture. Okay, these are super cool. It looks like my templates may need a little bit of tweaking, but the important thing is that the pen is doing great. Uh, so far, there's no signs of any struggling to push through the filament, and I really like that it goes super slow all the way down to not moving at all. So basically, no matter how slow you want it to extrude, you should be able to find that exact level. The extrusion is very consistent and smooth. I like that. Some pens are like chick, 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 chick. This one kind of just flows. So very nice. The last thing I wanna to do to test this pen out is try out some flexible filament. Also, I just want a flexible hexaspherecon, so there's that. We are gonna to wanna to adjust the temperature up to the ABS setting, which is what the three doodler does for its flexible filament. We'll just turn this clockwise about 45 degrees like so. And for our filament, I'm gonna be using this Scribbler flexible filament. And we'll just load that into the pen as with any other filament. After purging out that purple, I went ahead and traced out this little mini Octosphere Con. Although I forgot that flexible filament sticks to paper a little bit better than PLA. So here's the result. It's interesting, but that's not what I was going for. So let's do this Hexaspherecon instead, and this time I'll trace it on top of the three doodler pad, which works quite well with this flexible filament. It pulls off nice and easily, and unsurprisingly, this print is way floppier because it's flexible, maybe a little too floppy. So I think for this one, we'll actually go ahead and fill in all that empty space between the struts. That's a nice way to bring some more color into it as well. So let's swap out for this red, and then I'll start filling in these little sections that we've created so I can create this kind of checkerboard pattern. We'll go all the way down with the red, and then we'll go back and fill in the remaining sections with our green filament. Oh yeah, that is one tasty looking forbidden snack. Actually, why don't we try to assemble this whole thing inside out so that the shiny surface is on the outside of this hexaspherecon. And I'll also join these edges from the inside, at least as long as I can reach my pen into those corners. So once again, we'll start with one of these corner points and then work our way little by little along the edge. And it definitely got trickier and trickier as I got closer to closing up the whole shape, but I was able to get most of the edges on the inside, except for the last inch or so along one seam. So that's pretty nice. I was able to get this pretty clean looking, flexible Sphericon. It's super shiny, it's squishy. What more do you want? As for its rolling ability, well, it's still not as good as the 3D printed versions, but it's pretty fun. I bet it would make a great cat toy. There we have it, our Flexispherecon, I suppose you could call it. Very cool, and the 3D pen had no trouble with the flexible filament. If anything, it worked even better. So I've gotta say, the Mint 3D Super 3D pen is super impressive. As of right now, I really have no complaints and if I'm being completely honest, this pen is as good or better than every other 3D pen I've tried in every way that I can possibly think of. It flows super nicely. I love the slider for the variable speed and it's got a great range of speeds there. I love that you can press to extrude or double tap so that it stays extruding and that works in reverse as well, which is really nice. Uh, the retraction is super impressive. As you saw with the PLA, there was barely any stringing. I had stringing with the flexible filament, but that's expected. With PLA, this is basically the best performance I've gotten out of any 3D pen. It didn't show any signs of struggle. I guess it's a little bit weird that you have to use a tool to adjust the temperature, but I figure most people are gonna stick with one material and otherwise they're not gonna be switching back and forth too often. So that's not a big deal. It's actually a good thing because you can fine tune that temperature 
Um, although it doesn't give you a readout. So yeah, I guess there's that. There's no digital readout. You can't see uh, a thing telling you the speed or the temperature, but you can see the speed and the temperature doesn't really matter. It either extrudes well or it doesn't. So you can adjust that. Yeah, this pen is awesome. I guess the one other thing is price. This pen is $40, which is a pretty reasonable price compared to the other premium pens like the Scribbler V3 and the Three Doodler, which are closer to $60 to $80. This is a good deal. Of course, I've done previous videos with pens as cheap as $15. And if you can still find one of those and you're just trying to do the occasional repair of a 3D print, I would probably still go with a super cheap pen. But if you plan to use a 3D pen as a 3D pen to create all sorts of little models and things, you're probably going to be trying to get a lot of hours out of this. And I think a pen in this range will probably last longer and be more reliable than those super cheap pens. That said, I've done what I've done today and uh, I could definitely still put more time into this pen. So I will be using it for my future projects. I do probably have a big 3D pen thing coming out kind of soon. I'll try to use the Mint 3D for that, so keep an eye out, but yeah. This pen gets my approval, it's super cool. So that's that, we're just about done, but to finish things off, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a few 3D pen pixels for my patrons. I will use the Mint 3D pen, but I'll also grab a few other ones just so I don't have to swap out colors as often. All right, so our first pixel for today is gonna be for Ross. And Ross asked me to do the Ultima Online logo. Before I do that, I'll create this solid black background and then we can go in with this nice silver filament and create the logo. And I think I can add even more detail using this gold filament. This is actually a great demo here of using the mint pen at a very slow speed in order to get these small details. It worked really well, and even at this tiny level of detail, there's pretty minimal stringing. There we go. All right, our next request comes from Andrew, who asked me to draw a green 1990 Geo Tracker, which is a Jeep, and it was pretty tricky to fit it onto this little square tile. I kind of ended up doing a cartoony squashed version of it. Cars are definitely not my specialty, but in this case, I think I pulled it off all right. If that wasn't difficult enough, this next request from Senya Listen is quite the doozy. First of all, Senya asked me to draw Mount Kazbek, which is a dormant stratovolcano located in the country of Georgia. So I did my best to capture its beautiful, often snow-colored peak, and in front of that we can have some nice greener mountains. So that's all well and good, except for this is just the background. In the foreground, Senya asked me to draw a full suspension red and black mountain bike. So I went ahead and stuck that in the corner here. I didn't want to completely cover up the mountain. And bikes, once again, super challenging, but hey, I'm pretty proud of myself on this one. What do you think? Cool, so those are our three pixels for today. Let's go ahead and add them to the pegboard. We can finish off this edge, and I guess we'll move down to the bottom and start a new line right here. Very nice. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys had fun following along. As for the Mint 3D Super 3D pen, like I said, it was super awesome. It's definitely got the make anything seal of approval, and I can't wait to keep using it. If you wanna Get one of these pens for yourself. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put a link for you guys to get these uh, templates that I designed. I'll go ahead and fix these up to make sure they're actually done right. And then those will be available for sale in the Make Anything store. Or if you're a patron, I'll make those available for free. And you get a pixel. But that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.